we know different kinds of motions in our daily life. This is translatory motion. Now this kind of motion is called rotatory motion. And what about this? This is circular motion. Now this kind of motion is oscillatory or vibratory motion. If we consider the motion of a pendulum of a wall clock, back and forth motion of the balance wheel of a wristwatch, a motion of string in musical instruments like violin, guitar, etc. Motion of a mass attached to a spring, to and fro motion of molecules of air, the invisible motion of atoms in a solid. All these motions are examples for oscillatory or vibratory motion. Now we are going to study a special kind of motion under oscillatory motion which is called harmonic motion. In oscillatory motion, we are observing that the particle or the body repeats its motion along the same path and the motion is repeated at particular intervals of time. This kind of motion is called periodic motion. That means any motion that repeats itself along the same path in equal intervals of time is called a periodic motion. A periodic motion need not to be oscillatory. Suppose we consider the motion of earth around the sun. It is a periodic motion. For every one year, it repeats its path. But it is not an oscillatory motion. That means all oscillatory motions are periodic, but all periodic motions are not oscillatory. Suppose we consider a pendulum. This position is called mean position or equilibrium position. When you pull this pendulum and leave it, then it oscillates about this mean position. When it stops the oscillatory motion, it comes to rest at this position. A mean position means the position about which the body oscillates. If we consider the motion of particles during wave motion, all these particles are having oscillatory motion or we can consider all these particles are having a particular type of motion which is called simple harmonic motion. The displacement of a particle in periodic motion which can be expressed in terms of a harmonic function that is a sine or cosine function is a harmonic function. Already you studied about the graphs related to sine and cosine functions. This is the graph related to sine function. Just you observe this graph. The graph is drawn taking the different angle values along x axis and their sine values along y axis. All the values of sine oscillates between minus 1 to 1. You get a graph as are saying in the figure. Similarly, in case of cos, all the cos values oscillates between minus 1 and 1. You get a graph as are saying in the figure. These two functions are called harmonic functions. If the displacement of a particle in a motion is represented by these functions, then we can consider that is a harmonic motion. Harmonic motion is a special case of periodic motion. Every periodic motion may not be harmonic, but all harmonic motions are periodic motions. When an oscillatory motion have some more additional properties, then it is treated as a simple harmonic motion. A periodic motion of a particle is said to be simple harmonic if the motion of the particle is vibratory about a mean position. The acceleration of the particle is always directed towards the mean position. The magnitude of the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement of the particle from its mean position. That is A proportional to minus X. If these three properties are satisfied, then we can consider that periodic motion or vibratory motion is a simple harmonic in nature. For example, we consider the motion of a simple pendulum. Now this is mean position. 
If you pull this simple pendulum and leave it, then it oscillates as I was saying in the figure. How it is oscillating about this main position? And this simple pendulum oscillates because of the gravitational force of earth. When it is oscillating about this main position, we can observe the displacement of this particle on both the sides is equal and if we consider the acceleration of the simple pendulum, it is always directed towards its main position. Suppose you consider at this position, the weight of the body is acting vertically down, mg. This weight can be resolved into two components. One is mg cos theta, another is mg sin theta. Here theta is the angular displacement of this simple pendulum. And due to this component g sin theta, it is oscillating. What is the direction of this acceleration? That is towards the mean position. Similarly, if I consider the same pendulum at this extreme position, here also mg is vertically down. It can be resolved into two components, mg cos theta along this direction and mg sin theta along this direction. Because of this force, mg sin theta, the pendulum will move along this direction. That means the acceleration is g sin theta and it is directed towards the mean position. That means you check any point during its path. The acceleration is always directed towards its main position. And another condition is the magnitude of acceleration is g sin theta. From this figure, if theta is small, we can write sin theta equal to 2 x by L, where L is the length of the pendulum and x is the displacement. That is acceleration is equal to 2 gx by L or we can say the acceleration proportional to displacement. Therefore, in the case of simple pendulum, the motion of the particle is vibratory about a mean position. The acceleration of the particle is always directed towards the mean position and the magnitude of acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement. Since these three conditions are satisfied, we can consider the simple pendulum is having simple harmonic motion. In simple way, we can define the simple harmonic motion like this. The to and fro motion of a particle about a mean position on a fixed path such that the acceleration of the particle is always directed the mean position and is directly proportional to the displacement of the particle from its main position is called a simple harmonic motion. That means a motion which satisfy these three characteristics is called a simple harmonic motion. If we consider a simple harmonic motion, it is characterized by time period, amplitude and energy. Time period is nothing but the time taken for one complete oscillation. And the frequency is 1 by t, which is nothing but the number of oscillations in unit time. And amplitude, the maximum displacement of the particle during the motion is called amplitude. And during the simple harmonic motion, the time period is constant, the frequency is constant, amplitude is constant and the motion is with constant mechanical energy. These three are the characteristics of a simple harmonic motion. Now we take another model which can demonstrate simple harmonic motion. This is a system in which a mass is attached to an oscillating spring. Consider a mass M. This is attached to a spring which is suspended vertically down as are seeing in the figure. When you pull this mass and leave it, then what happens? The mass will oscillate as are seeing in the figure. This is the mean position. When you pull the mass and leave it, the mass will oscillate about this main position. When this mass moves to this position, a force develops in the spring which is called the restoring force that tries to move the mass back. When the mass comes to this position, it will be compressed. Again, a restoring force will develop in the spring which helps the mass to move vertically down. When the mass is at this position, a force is developed along this direction that is towards the mean position. 
therefore acceleration is also in the same direction similarly when mass is at this position the restoring force developed in the spring is vertically down that is towards the main position during the motion of this mass always the acceleration is directed towards the mean position that means in this motion the motion of the particle is vibratory about a mean position the acceleration of the particle is always directed towards the mean position and the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement why means the restoring force developed in the spring is given by f equal to minus kx where k is the spring's constant therefore the acceleration a equal to f by m this is equal to minus k by m into x or we can write a proportional to minus x that means the magnitude of acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement of the particle from its mean position therefore we can consider the motion of the loaded spring is simple harmonic in nature now we take another example for simple harmonic motion as i was saying in the figure take a u shaped tube fill the tube with water up to these two levels a1 and a2 in the limbs l1 and l2 and now blow a with sufficient force in one of the limb now what you can observe this force disturbs equilibrium of the water in the tube and the water level oscillates about mean positions a1 and a2 as you are seeing in the figure how we can explain this a component of force due to gravity acts on the center of mass of the water when it is displaced from its equilibrium level thus the water oscillates making a simple harmonic motion till the equilibrium is restored this is also one of the example for simple harmonic motion determination of acceleration due to gravity by simple pendulum the laws of simple pendulum are the time period of the simple pendulum is independent of amplitude the time period is independent of mass of the bob the time period is directly proportional to the square root of length of the pendulum that is t proportional to root l or we can say root l by t is a constant at a given place this means l by t square this is constant applying these laws we can determine the acceleration due to gravity at a given place for this take a simple pendulum and note the length of the simple pendulum the length is nothing but from this rigid support to the center of mass of this bob this is the length of the simple pendulum now pull this bob aside slightly and release it it begins to execute simple harmonic motion using a stopwatch you note what is the time taken for 20 complete oscillations like this you repeat the experiment for three times from this the time period is given by the time taken for 20 oscillations by 20 this gives the time taken for one oscillation which is nothing but the time period of the simple pendulum for different lengths of the pendulum that means by taking different lengths of the pendulum say 30 40 50 60 which are in centimeters you repeat the experiment and you tabulate the readings as shown in figure and from this you find the average of l by t square that means in this table we are having the length of the simple pendulum time for 20 oscillations this is the average time and the time period for one oscillation you find t square and you find what is l by t square and find the value of l by t square this we get constant and the relation between l t and g at a place is given by t equal to 2 pi into root l by g this is nothing but the time period of the simple pendulum from this we can calculate the value of g and which is given by g equal to 4 pi square l by t square and this l by t square is the average value what we are getting from this table and substituting the value of l by t square we can calculate the value of g at a given place g is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity 
you know what is acceleration due to gravity acceleration due to gravity is nothing but the acceleration gained by a freely falling body due to earth's gravitational force is called acceleration due to gravity in this case when a body is falling freely we consider no other forces are acting on the body this is the method to determine the value of g using simple pendulum